I think this is modern web scraping. We just ask the API for the data and it gives it to us. This is actually more common than you might think, really. Although in most cases you're gonna need some kind of headers or something, but in this you don't, it's nothing there. You just have to ask it, make a curl request, and it'll send you the JSON back. All structured, neat and tidy, everything that you want. In this video, I'm going to show you what to look for, give you a couple of options of how to export it to. So let's get started. Right, so it's clear if, if you look at this page on the on the left that uh, I, we don't even need to check the HTML or nothing. This is, this is JavaScript. We've got to load more. I wouldn't even bother looking at it, to be honest. I'd go straight to the inspect and go straight to the network tab. Uh, it's running here, so I'm just gonna delete all of this stuff and I'm gonna refresh the page. And let's see what comes through. Uh, and the first thing I'm noticing, are these ones here that say endpoint, there's a number, and this one says page is equal to zero. That's a dead giveaway. Uh, so I'm gonna move this to my other screen. We'll zoom in a bit, and we're gonna be focusing on this endpoint here. So here's all the headers and stuff, and this can be quite interesting sometimes, however, don't always get caught up in this, just check first. But let's make sure this is the data that we want. Go to response preview. Oh look, it says total records, current page, items per page. This is just an API response as we were expecting. Score nodes, and here we are. Here's all the information that that page was being given from the API to load up and to store. This is what we want. What I suggest you start doing is just grabbing the request URL. So I'm going to copy the value. I'm going to open up a window here and I'm going to go curl and I'm going to paste it in and there it is. That's it. That's everything. And all you need to do to get the next load is to change the page number. And I didn't even look at changing items per page. Maybe that works too. But how can we turn this into a Python script so we can run it and get all the data and have it all together nice and neat. That's the main thing. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm just going to make sure I've got this copied. We have our script open here. So what we're going to do is just create a short script to grab this information and we'll either um, and we'll output it to a CSV file and we'll also output it to a long JSON file. So I'm going to import in a couple of things. I'm going to use HTTPX today. I really like HTTPX. Requests will work fine or whatever you like. I'm also going to use rich um, because it just helps when I print things out into my terminal so you guys can see them. I'm going to import print. You absolutely don't need this. It's just handy. So to export stuff, you can absolutely write it using the CSV module in, in Python if you want to. Um, I use pandas, it's a it's using a massive library for a tiny thing. Um, it works, uh, not to say. And we're also gonna need JSON because we're gonna export things as JSON. So the first thing we wanna do is have a function that's going to download that JSON file. So we'll call it download JSON and we're gonna give it, let's say we'll give it a URL so we wanna know what we're getting out. Then we'll do our response is gonna be equal to httpx.get this URL. Remember I said this one worked without any headers or anything like that, so we're not going to put them in. Now when we looked at the response on the uh, over here in the preview, you'll see that we have this, uh, all the data is under this score nodes thing. So I'm actually just going to spit that out. So we'll say for node in response.json and it was score nodes like this. What we're going to do is we're actually going to yield it out. So this is going to turn this into a generator function. It's just a nice, easy way of looping through and getting all of the nested bits of information out without having to then end up with lists of lists. That's why I use yield in this case. We're just going to yield it. So this is going to be JSON data. So let's try this. So we'll have our main function. So we'll just do main and we'll say our URL is equal to, is this still in my clipboard? Oh, it is. There we go. And we'll do our, uh, we'll print. So as this is a generator function, it's an iterable. So we'll do for item in our download JSON URL. And we'll just print out the item for the moment. Okay. And so then we just need our main function, our main, if name is equal to main. Oh dear, I've lost it. Main. There we go. Main. Super. Right. Run. Bang. So you can see them all come by. This is all the information. This is each individual university. So this is all chunks of our data that we want. So we want to actually be able to loop through the pages. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. 
Um, you could check that there's 35 pages and just hard code it, which is what we're going to do. Or you can make a request. Uh, and if you were going to do this with an API that you're going to work with more and more, you can make a request and you can then ask for the total pages and then use that or the to total records or something like that. We are just going to loop through it. I'm going to store everything into a results list and we'll do for I in range. Uh, and remember this started at 0, 35, please. So we'll do this and we just need to then, let's make this in the middle of the screen, indent this code. There we go. And there we, that's, instead of printing the item, we will do our results dot append the item. So we're gonna save each, each time our download JSON yields something from its generator, we're gonna save it to our results list. As I said, this way we don't get a list of lists every time we do something with this function. So let's go ahead and then print out the length of our main list. And I'm also going to print out this. So we'll get rid of that, I don't need that. We'll do print uh, page i. And here we're gonna turn our URL into an F string. And where it says page equals here, we're going to make this our I like that. So let me format this with black. There we go, sorted. So let's go and run this and we should get, find that we get uh, 35, 35 pages and 521 individual results. Hopefully we do get that. There we go, 521. So we know we're getting everything. So we want to talk about exporting this out now. Now I'm going to use pandas, but we're also going to save it as JSON. So let's write the JSON uh, function first. So we'll do def uh, save to JSON and we'll just give it our uh, data like this. So we're going to do with open, we always use a context manager with a file and we're going to call this one results.json file and we'll make this writable and as F. So we're opening the file as F. Then we can do json.dump. I'm going to dump all of the JSON from our data into our file. Okay. Uh, so let's get rid of the printing now and we'll just add in on this other line here. We'll do save to JSON our results there. In fact, we'll write the CSV one and we'll do them both at the same time. So to do CSV, we're gonna do uh, save to CSV. And again, we wanna give it the results and then we can make our data frame. So we'll just call this DF for data frame is equal to PD dot data frame of our results, our keyboard skills results. Then we can just call um, DF dot to CSV and we'll just say um, results.csv and I'm going to get rid of the index as well. I rarely want that index, it's false. Result. Okay, well, we'll make that results actually. In fact, let's make it data so it's consistent with our other function too. Great. Right, let's add our save to CSV in here. Save to CSV results. So we're going to make both of these save. Okay, let's run it now. And we should get a CSV file at the end of this and also a large JSON file results JSON that we can actually look through there. So that's done. So there's our CSV file and our JSON file. I'll open the JSON file here in NeoVim. We're going to format with black. I know black is a Python thing, but this does seem to sort it out well enough. I don't think I've got a JSON one installed. Um, it is going to take a second though, because this is like 30,000 lines, I think. There we go. So we can then search for Harvard. There's Harvard. I don't know any other ones. I saw Toronto was in there. Yeah. Yale. Yep. There we go. You can see there's all the data. All neatly structured, all exactly everything that you could want from that website, all nice and simple. It's not always this easy, but sometimes it is. And if you're interested in this sort of way of scraping, you're gonna like this video too, which is more of the same thing.